this is real fun. Oh my god. I'm not in there though. Oh, nice one. Oh, pretty. Oh, I like it. I do actually get quite a lot of questions from people saying, I don't go on holiday, I don't have any holiday snaps, but I'd still like to scrapbook, and how could I do that? So, I thought, you know what, it's quarantine, this is a perfect time to do that, we're not going to be going on holiday anytime soon. I've printed out loads of these Polaroids from just memories with my friends and um, special events and things that I've been to, and I thought, you know what, I'm just going to scrapbook these instead. To print out these, I use my Instax mini link, which is basically like a printer, but something else actually that I've learned to do is to make a Google Doc and so I can finally share that Polaroid Word document with you guys without having to email it to you all individually. So if you'd like to print off your own photos on photo printing paper or just normal paper at home, I will leave that link below so you can actually now use that. But today I have a new gadget um, I would like to share with you. This is my sealing wax stamp kit. Basically when I was sending letters to my pen pals I would use this to seal my envelopes so what you do is you would light this candle put this little spoon over the flame then you melt the wax then you pour it onto the envelope and then the coolest part of all is you would seal it with an M because maying it was pretty cheap I think off Amazon so I will leave that as well linked below so as you can see, this page has been a work in progress for so long, literally since February of last year. So over a year ago, I've just been collecting random Polaroids of my friends and I got given a plant with this plant pot and this ribbon and stuff. And I thought I'd kind of make it like growing leaves, a nice little floral background. And now I have more Polaroids. I will just reiterate this again, that my washi tapes, my stickers and stuff like that, and a lot of the papers I'm gonna use today come from Stationery Pal. As you can see, I've also got a bit of a theme of using my stamp pad, which I got from Poundland. Luckily, this goes all the way up to, I think it's 2025, so I won't have to change this anytime soon. Um, and I just stamp the date on it and it makes it look nice and cohesive. One of my top tips is when you're sticking the stickers, to stick them in the corners because often these Polaroids, after a little while, will try to pop up. Okay, so I was going to attempt to press some flowers, but I realised that the flowers I'm using are already very much dry and dead so I don't think there's going to be that much success so I feel like I'm going for a bit of a Jane Austen old-fashioned vibe with this scrapbooking session today but I basically went to an event for the screening of Emma and we learned how to do some calligraphy so I've got some inspiration for some lettering um, and exemplar sheet of all of the letters and stuff Remember, pressure on the down strokes and then release on the up strokes. When I was younger, I used to actually have a calligraphy set that I got really cheaply. I think these aren't expensive. You can probably pick them up for a couple of pounds. Ah, it's terrible. No, 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 no. So I have got a new idea where I'm just going to draw on flowers instead. Um, and I'm going to draw them in black because I feel like that goes with the monochrome three photos that I've got here. And also they're super easy to do. So if you've got any extra space, just do these kind of leaf flower drawings and you're good. So I am pretty happy with how this page has turned out. I'm trying to keep a theme of this kind of translucent paper that I used for the Mean Girls Party one. So a quick tip when you are trying to buy papers for your backgrounds, I would definitely say simple is better. So when you've got photos that are like this, I would almost cut out each little circle and use that as a sticker or something because if you have that underneath photos, it looks really busy. Spots, stripes and strokes work really well as a background. So for example, this, that's quite hard to use as a scrapbooking background. However, if you've gone on a Christmas holiday and you wanna do a double page spread, but you've only got photos to fill a page and a half, then that is perfect. That will fit there and you can write winter over the top or like where the location that you went to. So it's kind of a mix and match, but I definitely use patterns a lot more than I do actual photos. So because this page is actually short of a photo, this one has eight photos, this one's only got seven, I'm gonna use my visitor's pass, and I did that little peeling trick that I always talk about that's really good, um, so that it's gonna be thinner and will stick a lot easier. No. See, that's why you write things in pencil. Then I'm gonna get my map, and I'm gonna cut out each individual place that we visited rather than doing the whole big square of map that I usually do. Mm -hmm. 
So we've got a straight page and a wonky page. So when you can't go on holiday, you just use photos from old holidays. Look, recognise that? Yeah. As wait, sorry, as the plague of of twenty twenty, yeah. Yes. This is basically like a time capsule of um, quarantine. What is going on at the moment? Yeah, because they're going to change the pennies eventually, and eventually we're not even going to use money. Remember? Yeah, yeah that's true. Stop okay. Now, because I thought the Sardinia looked a little bit bland, just with the black writing, I thought I would go over with a white pen and kind of make some shadows. I used to do this when I was a lot younger. I used to write song lyrics and this kind of thing and put it in my diary. So I've had a couple of years of practice, but all you do is you basically just color in one side of a line. So for example, I'm doing the left side of every stroke up or down. So I've had a bit of what you might call a scrapbooker's nightmare. Um, I've run out of glue so I'm having to use sellotape to stick down my photos and stuff. Yeah you might be able to see I'm also now running low on sellotape so... Huh. Oh that's funny. And then this envelope I'm gonna stick in using those little clip things that I speak about all the time that are really really useful and then that will just flip around in the binder. So it's actually uh, the next day. I've come back with some new glue sticks and that's why things might look a little bit different. I was having a bit of trouble with this page, not only because I was trying to use sellotape, um, but also just because my colour themes weren't really working and I had greens and pinks and blues and it was just getting a bit messy and quite dark. What I've done is I've collected some of my favourite memories from my second year at uni so far. This side is the green and the blues and then this side is more the bluey purples, grey kind of colours. So the key to scrapbooking is actually just keeping everything and then um, it will come in handy. So something that I feel not a lot of people realise is that it's actually kind of the placement of things that takes the longest amount of time and then, you know, sticking it on, it does take a wee while, but it's just kind of finding out what fits and what doesn't fit because I don't want this page to be too busy and that's why I was spending ages using the full tickets but I thought in the end why don't I just use the little, you know, the tear off parts of it because it's just too big. With the backgrounds I knew I wanted something because I didn't want to have the brown paper on the bottom so I'm using this kind of Buddha paper which isn't really my style but it does still go with the colour theme. As long as it goes with the colour theme it can go on, it's fine. <laughs> So I know I speak about this a lot in basically every scrapbook video, but just make sure that you keep all of your little extra side parts that you tear off. So for example, this um, background here, this tartan background ripped off and it fit perfectly here. The same goes with these parts that I've ripped off from previous pages. I don't know, there's something about it, like the square plus that always equals the width of my book for some reason. And it's so, so useful. So just make sure that you're not chucking things away. I mean even scrap white paper you can still use to then um, write some information down like I've done here. So I've decided for a double page spread to kind of dedicate it to my grandma and granddad because I've got these photos around my room which I'm going to have to take down anyway when I move rooms. So I thought you know what I'm going to take them down and I'm going to keep them in this scrapbook and it's kind of like there's a bit of inception here because these two photos were taken from my nan's photo album like her scrapbook and now it's going in mine. I'm using the paper that we got in the calligraphy pack as the background for the photos and what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically make this page super old fashioned and use my stamp set to seal down these photos. Another thing I'm going to try out is this brick wall stamp. So I've spoken about how stamps are great because they are basically like reusable stickers in a way and this blank ink stamp pad hopefully there's enough ink in it to make it a nice kind of background because I feel like this photo is so poignant I don't know I just really like it so I want it to be the center stage and then maybe just having this as a kind of almost like a corner 
a little bit of a decoration. So something that I thought I should mention is kind of the warmth of a page. So because I'm going to be leaving some of this brown, that is like a warmer tone. And I had these silver tapes on, but because they kind of add this cold touch to the photo it doesn't really work as well like the yellows in here and the oranges make it a bit warmer and that's why I didn't use the silver stamp seal wax and um, I thought the gold would be better to work with this paper and the brown and granted these photos are a little bit cool toned but it, it doesn't matter like this is the main one with the brown I probably should have used better quality paper to write that on rather than just my scrap paper because the ink is bleeding a little bit but doesn't matter, you can kind of read it. So my nan used to do loads of beautiful paintings and one of my favorite kind of artworks that she did was her pen and ink. I thought this would be a good page to kind of have a go at that. This is a really thin pen, so I might move um, to a bigger one. I feel like this is as good as I'm gonna get this wonky spider tree, but there's something in me that kind of wants to just draw like a cat or something here. This pen is just really fun, as you can probably see. I just enjoy using it and writing things that's meant to be grass it doesn't look like it but that was meant to be grass so i think i am now finished with this page that is kind of the end of this video i really hope you enjoyed it um and it gave you some inspiration to start your own scrapbook please do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe to this channel for weekly videos and i will see you next week have a lovely day bye